Welcome to the Momsiety Club podcast. I'm your host, Tori Levine, and I like to think that I can keep calm in a difficult situation based on my background working in a psych hospital. But when I had kids, I was constantly questioning if I was doing things right or how I was messing them up this time. Add in a child with a chronic illness and I found myself full of anxiety. Momsiety is a real thing for every new parent, and when you add in a chronic illness, food allergy, or other challenging circumstances, it can become downright isolating. And that's why the Momsiety Club is here for you. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood, so join me and let's get rid of this Momsiety together. Welcome to the Momsiety Club podcast. Today, you're just going to have a solo episode from me, so... I hope this rings true to you, and here we go. As if finding childcare wasn't hard enough, finding childcare while having two kids who can't get vaccinated and one who has a compromised immune system during a pandemic is insanely hard and anxiety-producing. I know that I am not the only one who is having these issues. I know that there are moms out there that are in the same shoes and it's possibly even more challenging challenging because they don't have the option to stay home or they don't have the flexibility to work different hours or have their spouse change their schedule when possible. And I acknowledge that I'm fortunate enough to be in this situation where I have the choice, but that doesn't make it any easier. Hard is hard. And I referenced this in a previous episode that there's a whole talk that hard is hard. Your heart is hard. My heart is hard. And it can be different for each person. Um, there's no, we shouldn't be comparing our hearts to each, our hard situations. And just be empathetic and acknowledge that stuff is hard. So I know that I'm not the only one this worried worried that I'm coming off sounding crazy in my posts looking for childcare, worried that I'm coming off sounding crazy in my messages, like asking about how cautious they are. I'm worried that I will never find anyone, worried that there will be another comment about my anxiety rubbing off on my kids. And that really is the one that gets me. I rationally know all these things because I help other moms deal with the same emotional struggles of parenting a kid with a chronic illness. But I'm here feeling all alone, like I'm the only one. And you know what? I understand why. Because when anxiety is high, we are already in a state of survival mode. Our fight, flight, or freeze response has already been triggered, and the rational brain has nothing on our lizard brain that takes over in these situations. So what do you or I do in these situations? Well, it all really depends. It depends on a lot of factors. The ideal is that we're able to learn and, re- and recognize these specific triggers before our little lizard brain takes over. But once our lizard brain is in control, our rational brain has lost and we need to learn how to fight back like a lizard. And I really wanted to do some like funny uh, joke about a fighting dragon or all this stuff, but I couldn't really come up with anything. So, so how can we connect back to our rational brain will vary from situation to situation. I love a good dance party, but unfortunately that is not always an option. I can't just turn on the safety dance blasting and start dancing like a, like waving my arms and jumping every single place I am. Deep breaths and controlled breathing are another go-to technique that is a little bit more reasonable to do in other situations where I'm not just on my own. You know, if I'm on a meeting call or when someone, when my anxiety just shoots off because of something said, just 
that nice deep breath is generally more society a societal norm rather than just dancing like crazy um so anything that can disrupt your thinking and another big one is nature just stepping outside feeling the wind or the sun or the rain uh, or anything like that just there has been research to show that literally stepping outside for five minutes can help with that calming reflex and the breathing I forgot to mention this before breathing when you inhale and then exhale for longer it actually calms your central nervous system so if you inhale for four counts and then exhale for like six or eight counts that um, has been shown to kind of like kick your CNS your central nervous system like out of the fight or flight and kind of get you back into like where you are. So sorry, side note, I just want you to know that you are not the only one who worries. You are not the only one with mom's anxiety. You are not alone. No matter how alone in your worries you may feel, I'm here too. I've been there too. A lot of the times I'm in those worries reach out via email or on social media, reach out to a friend who has a child with a chronic illness, reach out to a friend who has a child who may be facing other challenges, share that you have mom's anxiety too, and just know that you are not the only one. I am here to support you. And the more we normalize and talk about these feelings, the easier it gets. The Momsiety Club podcast is not intended to take place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK. For more information about working with Tori or joining the Momsiety Club, head to join.momsietyclub.com. There, you'll find information about Sneeze Proof Your Pelvic Floor course, as well as the Anxiety Club, where you'll get access to two monthly support groups with other moms just like you, as well as exercises and a chat about the monthly theme to help manage your anxiety.